Vous êtes que des assassins. Vous tirez, hein C'est facile, hein Nous, on n'a pas d'armes, on n'a que des cailloux. On the 6th of April 1993 in Paris, Makomi and Boyle was shot dead while in police custody. The next day, Matthew Kasovitz began writing the screenplay to his second film. Jusqu'ici, tout va bien. Mais l'important, c'est pas la chute. C'est l'atterrissage. Il y a deux jours, il avait sévèrement blessé un jeune de la cité pendant une garde à vue. L'inspecteur a été démis de ses fonctions, mais Abdel Isha est toujours en observation à l'hôpital Saint-Georges. It's the aftermath of a night of uprising caused by Abdul being put into a coma. Kasovitz shows how the elites in Paris view and try to control those who have taken to the streets. They have sent in their enforcers, the police. They are watching over children on their way to school. They look apprehensive. There is a sense of us and them. It's a black and white world. By showing the police in this long tracking shot, Kasovitz demonstrates how the presence is just a show of power. Lahaine would explode Henry Miller's assertion that even the most humble mortal would feel alive in Paris. Kasovitz pulls focus away from the French capital. Don't look at the buildings. Look at these guys. Who are they? Why are they frustrated by the police and the elites? The three friends, Saeed, Vince and Huber, all live in the banlieue, the concrete jungle housing the poorest Parisians on the outskirts of the city. They are a joker, a fighter and a politician. Hain argues that if we understand these guys, we will understand Paris and subsequently the world. The mayor visits the estate, the scene of the riots, and Kasovitz cleverly uses the architecture of the buildings to demonstrate how politicians are removed from the people. The same thing happens when the media arrive. They are never on the same level as the residents. They are not interested in finding out the truth. They are looking for a soundbite, a story for the evening news, one that fits their prejudices of what those from the banyu are like. The decision to pull focus away from Paris is radical, revolutionary even. Contrast that to the film's most famous shot, which demands that we look at the banlieue. A DJ uses his window overlooking the estate as his booth, playing music for everyone. The use of hip-hop in La Haine is another signifier of the need to revolt. Rap music was distantly derived from the songs used as a mode of communication by African slaves on boats to America. The syncopated polyrhythm and raw street talking expressiveness mixed with the Jamaican toasting style was used to criticize the social political system that blocked the progress of African Americans. The music, the camera, the framing, the dialogue links those in the banlieue with this struggle. There is a mischievous celebration of rebellion that makes La Haine the most radical film of French cinema. La Haine takes Paris away from the elites and gives it back to the true citizens, the poor. They are the future.